1958, on a beautiful Sunday, we went to a local beach and we were having a barbecue and swimming and my sister took my brother and I on a raft and she started pushing us into the water, you know, you know, just pushing us around on the raft. And my older brother pushed me off the raft. And I went down deep, deep, deep into the water. And I could hardly breathe. I mean, I knew that I was drowning. And I was only seven years old at the time. And I, I couldn't help myself. I couldn't do anything to help me. And all of a sudden, I saw a white light. And it was a magnificent white light. And it was above me. It wasn't, you know, you couldn't see, you know, there was no clouds. There was no blue sky. It was this bright, amazing, beautiful light. And it pulled me toward it. And I could feel myself floating up and just being so light and floating. And I, I no longer had the problem of breathing. And the water wasn't there, you know, surrounding me, you know, making me feel very cold. And I went higher and higher. And as I'm going up in this beautiful light, on the side of me were all of these people. And they were white and they were shiny and it was almost like um, like they were ghosts, but I knew that they weren't. And, and I started moving up and up and I got closer and closer. I got closer to the white beam, the white light. And there at the very end of it was a white beam just shining, absolutely beautiful. And behind it were five other, I would say almost angelic beings. In fact, they all seem like angelic beings to me. And I felt nothing but love, empathy, kindness, caring, warmth, genuine love. It was amazing. And it just filled me up. It filled up my heart. It filled up everything around me. Here was a seven-year-old you know, feeling safe in a place that was so unfamiliar. And I wanted to stay there forever. And things were said to me. Things were, were told to me. And then they told me that it was time for me to go back. That it was time for me to return. And I slowly felt myself moving back down from the light. And as it got darker and darker, as I was, you know, moving past the the wonderful angelic beings that were that were basically you know reaching out and touching me you know I could sense a smile on them and it was beautiful and then when I got back into the water I felt somebody pulling my hair and pulling me out of the water and I was still unconscious I could just feel everything moving and then my father ran into the water and grabbed me and took me to the side on the beach and he was able to to put me on my side and to you know press my chest and to make sure and the water came out and when I became aware my mother was standing there holding my baby brother and my sib my other two siblings my sister and my brother were standing next to my mother and there was crowds all around us and I I was okay but I knew something changed. I knew something was different. I changed. I was no longer just a child. There was so much that I learned that was told to me and it was given to me in my subconscious level, not my conscious level. And I couldn't comprehend, you know, and they did say to me, you know, up in, you know, up in the white light that I would remember these, that this would all come to me. And I spent my life very quiet, and I spent my life seeing these spiritual beings. Every place I went, they were always there. Some people call them angels, some people call them spirit guides. Um, and I felt comfortable with them, but I never knew who they were. And then when I was in my 40s, I was introduced to my very first spirit guide. And then I was introduced to my next one, which was my great-great-grandfather, who's been with me since the beginning of time. 
and I learned a lot. I learned how to meditate. And I always gave love and kindness to others. And I always felt their pain. I always knew something was wrong. I became an intuitive empath and I could go nowhere without feeling their energy, their frequency, and their vibration. And it, it's been an amazing, amazing life and a terrifying life. Because who do I tell? Who do I tell people that I see things and that things, you know, come to me, spirit guides and angels. And, you know, I have seen, you know, the foot of Kali, you know, which is, you know, an Indian, you know, Hindu spirit. So my story even gets even more strange as I've grown and have I've, have I've learned. I was in quartzite boondocking and uh, this American Indian medicine man was in my camp and uh, he told me that great great grandfather wanted, or great grandfather wanted to speak to me, and he got into an argument with the other American Indian, you know, medicine woman. These are real people; these are real human beings. And then all of a sudden, my spirit guides, the two that I had, Reynold and and great great grandfather, appeared behind me, and then two more did. I call them A and K, and A and K took me back. They took me back to when I drowned. They took me back and told me things. And they opened up, I don't know how to pronounce it, I don't know how to say it, Askoski Records. I don't know, because I always had a speech impediment and I was very, very dyslexic as a child. Especially after, after I had this experience. And so they told me things told me things that were going to happen in in the world and told me things that that I was going to be a part of but most of all they taught me love caring joy love and understanding here in Quartzsite this year um, there was a woman that helped me and there she started to show me a picture of a dog and as she did that behind her standing was a young boy a teenager and she as she said that I looked into the eyes of this boy and it was the same eyes that were on the dog and she said that this photograph has her son's eyes and I said yes I know he's standing behind you and he started talking to me or talking to his mother and he said that he was okay because a lot of young people come to me when they've passed over because they want to tell their parent that loves them that they're okay and to let go. And it's happened several times to me. And as I started walking away that day, I turned around and there was one more. And I turned and looked at her and I said to her, there's one more standing behind you. And she told me that that was the twin of her son who died at childbirth. And she just beamed with light and love. And that's what I see. I see light and love and I see auras and I see and can heal people and do all of these things because of my experience when I was seven years old. It was magnificent. And they reminded me some 65 years later of what was told to me. And as I said, it's all in my subconscious. And when I need it, it comes up and it talks through me as I do channeling. It's an amazing process. We are part of the collective consciousness. We are one with the creator of all. We are one. And that is my message that they have constantly told me that no one is any better than anybody else. Nobody is like, I'm not special in what I do. Anyone can do this. Anyone. They're real. And how do you tell people this? They think you're, you're crazy. So you keep it to yourself. But I'm at an age now where I don't care. I'm going to tell my story because I want it to help other people who have had near-death experiences or have seen spirit guides or has, you know, it's, it's all about love. And with that, I want to say to you, walk in love, 
peace, joy, kindness, compassion, empathy, and most of all, love and the light. Namaste.